you have to be all in. You have to really be uh, committed from the top of the organization down to the bottom of the organization. You have to be committed to the process. Uh, th there can't be anybody who says, oh, look, that's not important. You know, deal with it when you've got time. It has to be uh, a, a very, very strong culture within the organization. Hello and welcome to a whole new episode of Engar TCX. I am your host, Chandri. And we're really glad to have all of you join us today. On this show, we talk to CX and tech experts from around the world. We explore, uncover, and share fresh insights on creating experiences that your customers will remember and look forward to. Engadi is the world's leading multilingual no-code digital CX platform available across 14 channels with 45,000 solutions created across 186 countries in every domain and use case. Engadi has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc. Magazine, Tech World, CIO and many others. We run the Engadi blog, video channel and the Engadi CX podcast receiving upwards of 4 lakh visitors annually. And now for our guest, Michael Brandt is a customer experience specialist focusing on voice of customer, complaint management, and customer journey mapping. He specializes in collecting customer data from different sources like surveys, customer journey maps, etc. to analyze and convert data into insights that identifies improvement opportunities. He then develops innovative CX strategies based on these insights to increase customer retention, loyalty, and to meet the ever-evolving expectations. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation, Chandani. But before we drive into our interview with Michael, don't forget to subscribe to Engati and tap on the bell icon below to get access to exclusive content from thought leaders around the globe. So, beginning with the interview, Michael, how can we develop and execute a group-wide customer loyalty improvement program that promotes business growth while strengthening relationships between customer and business? Right, well, Chandani, I think the, the, the very first thing, uh, and, and that is really important, is that the uh, senior executives, you know, the C-suite and senior management of the company absolutely have to be on board. If you're lucky, the the initiative will be coming from the C-suite, and so you'll have their backing to begin with. Uh, but if it's an initiative which is coming from a, a lower level within the, the organization, then it's absolutely imperative to, to, to get the uh, C-suite and senior management on board uh, right from the beginning, because these are the people that are going to be freeing up the resources and uh, and possibly unblocking uh, obstacles as as they come along. One other thing that's really important, and, and very often this is underestimated, is to get middle management on board. Middle management in, in many companies can be a layer of clay. Uh, it's impervious, it, it, it won't let anything through unless there's, they, there's, they see a benefit for themselves. So it's absolutely imperative also to win over uh, middle management so that they see uh, what's in it for them, uh, how it can benefit their operations. So, so that's the, the, the first thing, doing the groundwork uh, from a personal perspective and, and getting the, uh, the management on board. The second thing that's important to, uh, to know is what is it actually, if you're setting up a, a customer loyalty program, a voice of customer program, and it doesn't matter whether your program is NPS, CSAT, customer effort score, whenever you're asking customers for their opinion, what's important is to try and figure out what it is that you actually want to know. Uh, I would have people come to me and say, well, I want to send a survey to my customers. Uh, and I say to them, well, what is it you want to know exactly? Well, I just want to know what they think about us. And, and that really is a waste of time. You, you have to look at it uh, in a more focused way because ultimately what you want to do is to get data that's going to help you figure out where to prioritize uh, your improvements. So try to focus uh, the uh, the, the uh, requests to the customer. Uh, 
The other thing you need to decide is, do I want to do, uh, do I want to find out about the relationship in general, so a relational survey, or do I want to find out how we're doing when it comes to specific parts of the customer journey, so transactional uh, feedback based on uh, particular transactions. Then uh, the next thing that's really important to think about is who's going to be involved? What roles are, uh, are there going to be? Uh, who's going to decide who gets to, to be surveyed? Who's going to do the follow-up? Uh, who's going to resolve the issues? Uh, so, so who's going to be involved in the, in the whole of the program? Then another thing which is really important, which is often forgotten as well, is a communication plan. People within the whole organization needs to be involved. And so it's really critical for everybody within the organization to know what the target is, what the objective is, what we're trying to find out, what we're going to do with the, uh, the feedback and what the process is for making improvements and feeding these improvements back to the customers. And finally, I would say when it comes to the, the groundwork, the, the last thing is to uh, establish very clear governance. You can set up, let's say, a governance board or a governance committee. I would in, certainly involve the C-suite in this or people that they delegate, because again, these are the people that are going to be uh, putting the resources at disposal and, and unblocking any obstacles. So this um, governance committee, you can keep them updated, let's say at regular intervals, let's say every month, uh, showing them how the project is, uh, is evolving and what still needs to be done. Uh, where there are hang-ups, where there are difficulties, and, and so that the C-suite is involved right from the beginning and can give the whole project um, it, its backing. And I think a, another thing that could be mentioned is here that a, an important thing would be to do a project charter. So to put all this down on paper so that it's transparent, so that you have something that you can measure and so that you have a reference document that, that, that people can refer to. And I think once you have all these things in place, then that is a good foundation for setting up uh, a customer loyalty exercise across a, the, a big organization. Absolutely, absolutely, Michael. And as you said, that you know, all the people should be involved in the organization. You know, why you decide about the customer loyalty program? Because at a lot of times, businesses only businesses feel that you know the uh, sales team or the marketing team, which are at the forefront, should know about these. But rather, it's the entire organization that should be involved in that. That's very nice. Right. Absolutely, because I think, you know, when you start asking customers questions, you be surprised by the, the kind of answers that, that you get. And sometimes the, uh, the feedback you get is actually has nothing to do with the actual sales process, but it might have something to do uh, with, for instance, um, accounting. Uh, somebody might be aggravated with the with, with the format of the bills or the format of the invoices. The, so everybody really needs to be involved. And I think this also gives um, people within the organization a better of insight as to how they influence a customer's opinion. You know, this line of sight to the customer is really important. And I think very often people who are in the back end of an organization tend to forget that their actions too could influence uh, a customer's opinion. Absolutely, Michael. So moving on to our next questions, what steps would you urge businesses to take to elevate customer satisfaction scores? Well, I think the, th the first thing that is, is really important is you have to be serious about it. I mean, there's, there's no half measures when you're doing something like this. You really need to be all in and, and people need to be consistent. They need to know that this is something that the, the C-suite want. It's not something that can be neglected, put on the back burner. Uh, and, and I think this is really important. It has to be a priority. You have to be consistent in the follow-up communicate to customers, um, have a plan. You have to know, again, the roles. And this is really important. 
so that you don't have several people talking to customers about um, the same thing. Uh, this creates an, uh, a very unprofessional impression. It's important to have a process in place so that people know what their role is and so that the whole feedback loop to the customer is, uh, looks professional. It's really important to communicate to the customer to show them that they're being heard. W one of the um, things that I noticed when I did a, a survey program with a, a large company some years ago, some customers would reply to the email they got, not responding to the survey, but by saying, why, why would I bother re to reply to this email? Nobody's going to listen to me anyway. And I made a point of responding to each of these emails to say, actually, I just read your mail, and, and I'm sorry you feel this way, and I can assure you that every item of customer feedback is read and, and acted upon. And this, this elicited some very interesting responses from customers who would come back and say, wow, I didn't know that anybody was actually going to read my mail. Yes, please send me the survey again. I'll absolutely do it if somebody's going to read it. Customers don't want to waste their time. They want to know they're being heard. So it's absolutely crucial to, to let customers know that somebody is reading their feedback uh, and that it's being acted upon. The next thing that is, is really important is something that's known as the service recovery paradox. So the service reco recovery paradox basically says that a customer who's had a problem that's been fixed to his satisfaction is going to be more loyal to the company than a customer that's never had a problem at all. And this is particularly important when you're asking customers for feedback. If customers come back to you uh, complaining about certain issues, basically they want something to be done about it. They want to do business with you and they want something to be done about it. And if you go back to them with a solution, communicating with them, telling them what you're going to do about it, or if you can't do anything about it, telling them at least why you can't do anything about it, you'll find that customers are going to respond to that very positively. They're going to say, wow, I'm being listened to. Someone looked into my case. They're trying to do something about it. This is a company that looks after their customers. So, so I think this is really important. It, it's an amazing opportunity. And, I, and I've had several examples of customers who've responded to surveys in a very angry tone. And we've gone back to them, we've discussed the problems, we've found solutions, and they've come back and said, wow, I'm really impressed by the effort that you put into resolving this problem. And actually now I appreciate your company even more than I did before. And, and, and so this is really an opportunity and it has to be looked at as an opportunity to, uh, to, to gain a lot of uh, customer satisfaction. And, and so this, this, again, it's about follow-up. It's about listening to customers. And, and here I've got um, a system that I use when following up with customers. It's what I call the five A's. So when you go to a customer and you're uh, trying to discuss their feedback, very often the feedback that they give might only be two or three lines. It might just be the tip of the iceberg. But you want to find out more about it. You want to find out if there, there's something else below the surface, which is the cause of the problem. And here I use, as I said, a, a system called the five A's. So the first A is to acknowledge. Acknowledge the fact that uh, the customer gave feedback and that there might be an issue. Apologize. And I don't mean, when I say apologize, I don't mean uh, accepting responsibility right? Because maybe you, you're not responsible, but at least saying, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't meet your expectations. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry that you're unhappy uh, with what's happened. So this, this kind of an apology. The next thing is to amplify. So that's the third A, amplify. And that's to find out from the customer exactly what the issue is. And here, let the customer talk. Let the customer get everything off his chest. Uh, let him tell you uh, what's going on. Ask probing questions. But whatever you do, don't try and justify your company's uh, position or what happened. Just let the customer get everything off his chest. The fourth A is to ask. 
ask the customer, say, well, okay, what do you really want us to do? What's your expectation? And, and this will already give you uh, a reference point as, as to what the customer's expectations are and where you can look uh, to find a solution within your organization. And then the fifth A is very simply to act, to try and get this uh, feedback into your organization as soon as possible so you can get back to the customer as soon as possible uh, with, a, with an answer uh, to their, to their uh, issue. And I think if, if you uh, take these and, and you really um, grasp the opportunity that is customer feedback and, and also customer complaints, uh, if you grasp this opportunity to get back to your customers uh, with a program like this, then I think you'll find the customers respond very positively to it. And, uh, and that generally results in increased customer satisfaction uh, and returning customers. Absolutely. Communication is a very important thing from both the sides, yeah. from the customer as well as, you know, follow-ups from the businesses. But very well said, the five is totally agree to them. Like it. So moving on to our next question, how can organizations refine and restructure the complaint management process to assure transparent monitoring of the closed loop processes? Right. Well, I, I think the um, it's important that the process is is transparent. Uh, I think that's really important uh, within an organisation. Roles need to be very clear: who does what, uh, and there has to be uh, a governance in place so that somebody is is watching this, is uh, seeing that the process is being adhered to. Uh, when it comes to uh, root cause analysis, for instance, when it comes to responding to, um, to, to customers. And it has to be absolutely clear that, that there are no cracks in the process, that complaints uh, can't come in and then disappear in the organization with, with no response. Another thing that's really important is ownership. Uh, I, I worked for an organization uh, some years ago and when we when i first took over the complaint management uh, process the front end basically put the complaint into the system and then left it to the factories or to the manufacturing units to uh, to deal with it and we discovered there was there was actually no ownership the the, the role of the person inputting the uh, complaint into the system was what we call the complaint originator. So they put the complaint into the system and it was fire and forget, right? They weren't interested in what happened afterwards. And then we changed that and we said, no, th this is no good. Um, it can't be the factories dealing with the customers. It has to be the front end. So we changed the role of the person on the front line inputting the complaint into the uh, system and we called them the complaint owner we made them take ownership for the complaint. Now, obviously, they weren't always in a, in a position to resolve the issue. It had to go back to the factory. But they were responsible for seeing that deadlines were adhered to. They were responsible for putting pressure on the manufacturing unit or the resolving unit, as we called it, to, to come up with solutions. And they would vet the solution when it came back and say, okay, yes, this is something uh, that I can go to the customer with or to say, no, look, I'm sorry, this is, this is not satisfactory. The root cause analysis is, 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 has not been done properly. Um, I, I can't go to the customer with this. You have to rework it. So we really put the onus on the front line to, to really be the ambassador for the, for the customer and, and to ensure that complaints with, were dealt with in um, a satisfactory manner. There have to be metrics in place also, so you can measure just how uh, efficient the uh, the process is. And one thing that we also introduced uh, at the end was once a solution had been provided to the customer, we asked the customer to give us feedback. Uh, I think in some cases, uh, solutions weren't being fed back to customers because right at the very beginning, we, we got uh, feedback from the customer saying, you're asking me for my feedback, but, the but, but I haven't had a solution to the problem yet. 
So the this feedback um, request at the end of the uh, the process fulfilled two purposes. Firstly, it was a check to see that the solution had actually been provided to the customer. And this is really important. And secondly, it was an opportunity for the customer to come back and say, yes, this, uh, this solution is satisfactory. Um, it, it's been dealt with. Or for them to say, no, I'm still unhappy. Because what you don't want is for a customer to, uh, to go away with bad feelings. And then, then the next time you send them uh, the, the customer relationship survey, maybe six months later, uh, for, for them to come back again to this issue that's six months old, the longer it it, 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 it festers within the customer's mind, uh, the worse these things tend to become. So it's important to have an opportunity to try and nip these issues in the bud as soon as possible. So, so this is another opportunity to, to do that. Uh, and I think it's really important to say communicate with customers let them know what's going on. So even if it's taking you longer to resolve an issue than you thought initially, keep the customer updated so that they don't think that you've uh, you've forgotten about them and that the thing is still still being processed. Absolutely, Michael. That, that was really great. So moving on to our next question, what tips do you think businesses need to keep in mind when, when introducing a customer feedback program and customer issue resolution processes. And uh, do you think these programs are enough to turn around dissatisfied customers into satisfied and loyal customers? Okay, well, I would, I would say the tips that I would say are communicate openly with your customers. Communicate also internally so that each organization knows what's, what's going on. Uh, it should be, the whole process should be very transparent. Uh, it you have to be sincere and you have to be honest. So if you're just doing this as, um, because everybody else does it, but you're not really serious about dealing with the feedback, then don't bother doing it because it'll affect the reputation of, of, of your organization negatively. A CEO that I uh, once worked with when introducing uh, a program, he said to us, we have to be prepared to listen to uncomfortable truths. And, and I think that's that's really important. I think when you're setting up a program like this, you have to be prepared to hear things that you don't want to hear. And you have to be prepared to act on that. So, so as I say, you have to be open-minded. You have to be sincere. You have to be honest. You have to be open. You have to communicate. And, uh, and you need to take ownership for, uh, for the issues. So I think those are the tips uh, that I would give. Do I think that, that systems like this, that programs like this are enough to uh, turn around dissatisfied customers? Absolutely, I do. I think one of the things that frustrates customers the most nowadays is, is not being listened to, not being taken seriously. And I think that if um, they're dealing with an organization which takes their complaints and their issues and their requirements seriously, then I think this is absolutely a very good first step uh, and a critical element in establishing uh, a relationship of trust and a stronger bond with, with customers. Absolutely. That's, that's really good. I mean, we, we ourselves as customers, nobody listens to us, we feel really frustrated and, you know, we might even end up not buying that product or the service again because we weren't heard. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we definitely agree to what you said. Uh, so, before uh, we wind up the interview, Michael, any sound bites that you would like to leave your audience with? I think, as, uh, as I've said, I think you have to be all in. You have to really be uh, committed from the top of the organization down to the bottom of the organization. You have to be committed to the process. Uh, th there can't be anybody who says, oh, look, that's not important. You know, deal with it when you've got time. It has to be uh, a, a very, very strong culture within the organization. Uh, and this CEO that I mentioned earlier on, he, he once said to, to the senior managers within the organization, if you are not on board, 
then you're not then you're part of the problem and you know how you have no place within this organization so he he was sending a very very strong message right from the top of the company everybody needed to be involved every body needed to believe in this and everybody needed to be committed and there was no room no wriggle room uh, for anybody who, who who wasn't committed so so i think that's really important commitment is is really the key and and secondly communication uh, with customers and internally is is another very important element and uh, and i think that sort of covers the real main key elements to to a program like that absolutely this is amazing thank you so much michael for giving us your time your insight was really valuable and i know our audience is going to enjoy this interview it was my pleasure thank you very much chandani thank you so much so we'll be back with a new episode and a brand new expert soon so stay tuned and we'll see you around for the next one